information. Uh, in the studio, it's uh, Jermaine McConnell. Jermaine is the executive director of the Mississippi School for Mathematics and Science. And a lot of people have no idea. By the way, welcome in. Happy Thanksgiving Thank and uh, Merry Christmas to you. You doing okay? I am. I'm great. Have you, everybody escaped COVID in your family for the most part? Hey, uh, well, I, actually, I had an uh, aunt and an uncle that lived in Florida that both passed away from COVID. So no kidding. It's, it's very real to me. Jeez. Yes. Uh, they were elderly? Um, not really. Not really. Um, you know, um, mm. 70s, early 70s. Yeah. So the older you get, the older old oh, they were is. Young so people. Some young people, people would think that's old, but yes. <laughs> You are you are a smart man, and you can see that he's in the right place as far as mathematics is concerned. Absolutely, <laughs> we like him already, don't we? Uh, the School of Mathematics and Science provides an accelerated, immersive curriculum for the state's gifted and talented 11th and 12th grade students. Let me let me say this because and I, you and I were talking off the air. Mm -hmm. There are so many people who've moved into the state, and I mean people from of, of, of all races, religions, uh, and uh, they've come from all over the country, some from actually uh, overseas, yes. whether it's in Continental or uh, Toyota or wherever it happens to be, uh, Amazon, Google. Uh, and if they are in the state of Mississippi and they, they don't know about this school, yes. But I want them to know, and you gave me an example, and, and would you share that with me again on the air, if you can? Well, I, I, I don't want to call their names. No, I don't just, count no I, names. I, I just know that uh, we've had individuals who've accepted some pretty important positions uh, mm -hmm. here in the state because uh, they know MSMS exists. And, you know, uh, I remember this one individual said, uh, I wasn't going to accept that job until I found out about your school, and now it's my job to make sure that my child, um, mm. you know, is competitive enough to get into your school. So very important for a lot of people. All right, I'm going to ask some of the basic questions for people who don't know this, but uh, it's only the 11th and 12th graders. That is correct. They um, apply in the 10th grade. They apply in the 10th grade. While they're in the 10th grade, yes. And how many people can you take in the school? Uh, we, uh, right now, uh, we... Uh, have about 240. Uh, we have a capacity for mm -hmm. around 300. Um, so we're we're seeking additional funding. Hopefully, we'll um, you know sometime in the future we'll be able to fill that capacity. Now, when we get people who maybe can't afford this because I have no idea what it costs as far as the tuition is concerned. Can you mention that, or is that sure? Is we it, we are a public high school. It, it, is, here pu in it, it is a public high school. It is a public yeah. high school. So uh, there is no tuition. However, several years ago, uh, when we took the economic downturn mm -hmm. uh, around 2008, 2009, a $1,000 room and board fee was instituted uh, per family. It for, never went away. Year. It never uh, went away. Ne it? Never went away. Never. Oh, but <laughs> those who qualify for free or reduced lunch can mm -hmm. get that fee waived. And those who need additional assistance who don't qualify for the waiver can get assistance through our MSMS Foundation. That's $1,000 per school year. Uh, yes, per school Not year. semester. But. That's correct. So so any family out there who's concerned, uh, you know, there is assistance provided for you if you can't afford now, it. Now, the school is on the campuses of MUW? Yes, it's on the campus of MUW, which is located in, uh, well, the Mississippi University for Women, for those who don't know. Right, right. Uh, in Columbus, Mississippi. And and uh, th so they're, they reside there. Yes, they. How many they of there. them don't reside there? They actually travel back and forth. Well, we, uh, you have to reside. Well, you on have campus. to reside, and, there. and that's the thing that that's so important in mm -hmm. you know our students' development, the residential environment. I think that's what helps us to achieve so much. Through right, our let's students. talk about these are gifted students. Yes, I mean if you if you are a slacker, I hate to say it, but uh, <laughs> you're not going to get in. But tell me what the requirements are for to get in, because. The whole thing about this, if you find a student who is just not being challenged, they do have that IQ. Yes. I've seen some of these people. They're, yes. they're, they're, <laughs> they, they scare me, yes. especially in math. But I've seen these people, and they are so good. They're so talented, and you want them to be challenged. Yes, yes. And, and, I, and those are the people we're talking about. Yes, and, you know, we have to uh, make sure we make this distinction. Mm -hmm. Not all gifted children are making all A's and not knocking the top out. It's because some of them are not challenged, mm -hmm. right? And, right? and sometimes until a child is challenged or they find their passion, 
they won't begin to really uh, show you what they can do. And so uh, we ask teachers out there to identify those students who need more of a challenge, right, who uh, need to consider MSMS as an option. And so we do have what we call educator partners. We're looking for teachers in each school uh, that we can send information to or they can refer students to us because they are the ones who know the students that really need to be challenged. Do you have that working relationship now? And what percentage of the schools in the state is we, that? Uh, and, and our goal is 100 percent of the schools in the state, uh, even elementary so what, schools. Where right? is it now as far uh, as the percentage? Right now, I would say we're at about uh, 50 to 55 percent. All right. Well, I couldn't see any reason for them not to. Exactly. It doesn't cost them anything, does it? It doesn't cost them anything. What, but what just about the private schools? Uh, private schools, uh, we have probably around um, 15 percent of our, our population of mm -hmm. students that come from private schools as well. Meeting the same criteria. Meeting the same criteria. That and, is and do you have the private school teachers doing the same thing? We, we do. I mean, we, um, we try to get partners everywhere throughout yeah. the state of Mississippi. So what percentage of the referrals are coming from the schools versus that of the parents themselves? Well, I think uh, I speak to quite a few students. I don't know the numbers exactly. We're still trying to gather that information, and that's one of the things we're putting on the applications now. Um, but, you know, it really it's about word of mouth. Uh, those who've been there, parents or alums or, or those who yeah. just know about the school. Jermaine uh, McConnell is the executive director of the Mississippi School for Math and, and Science. And I want to talk about science, too, but is is this – bearing uh, some of the markers on how you do on the ACT, or what else can you gauge this by? Well, we gauge it, um, you know, admission criteria. We look at the ACT. Mm -hmm. uh, we also look at their grade average. You had that info as early as the 10th grade, though? Exactly. Enough? In, in order to apply, they have to have taken the ACT. Okay. So yes. that's a requirement. It, that is a requirement. We look at the grade average as well. We look at uh, recommendations from mm -hmm. uh, teachers, math teachers, science teachers, counselors. Uh, but we also look, you know, they do essays. Uh, we also have an interview that's a part of the entire selection process. So when they go over there, it's like they're going to college as far as the dorm situation. Yeah, that's correct. You know, it's um, college. Uh, it's it's the perfect transition to college mm -hmm. because they have enough, you know, a little bit of freedom, um, you know, but at the same time, we have enough guidance there uh, to make sure that they're doing what they're supposed to do. Girls versus boys, what's the breakdown there? Uh, surprisingly, over the last 10 years, uh, we have around a 60, 40 female male. So the guys are getting dumber. Uh, well, I wouldn't say that. I think the guys <laughs> maybe, you know, we, we do have some sports, uh, yeah. but I think we do lose some because we don't have your major sports like That's football, true. baseball, well, and Well, the other part of that, too, is that math and science has been two of the things that traditionally, historically, mm -hmm. have not been something that, that we've pushed as far as the, the female population is concerned. That's correct. Well, I think that changed, you know, yeah. um, about 20 years ago or so, a, a yeah. little bit more. And I think you, you're now beginning to see some of the benefits of that. Other schools like ours across the nation mm -hmm. are seeing some of the same things where they're having more females than, than males. Let's talk about science. What are we talking about as far as science is concerned? Oh, man. Um, you know, we we teach all lab-based sciences. And so uh, we, we have AP. Does that, does that include enrollment. things like data coding and things like that? Well, we, we have uh, computer science classes, computer some of those science. dual enrollment uh, with Mississippi State University. We also have an engineering program. We hired our first full-time engineering uh, teacher last year. Uh, the legislators, legislators gave us additional funding for that as well. Um, all of the courses at uh, at the school are taught at an honors level or above. Yes, yes. I mean, you're, you're dealing with students who are coming from their schools, and they've been some of the top uh, students at their schools, right? And so, mm -hmm. uh, we don't we do not have a valedictorian or a salutatorian, and we do that for a reason. We don't want there to be that level of competition among our students because some of them give mm -hmm. up being Val or Sal to come to our school. School's been there for how long? Uh, first class came in 1988, graduated in 1990. There have been times over the over the past uh, years where there's always some wrangling about uh, in the legislature, and sometimes people have to hold their breath while the budgeting goes on. But you guys are okay so far? We're okay right now. Uh, right we, now. We, the, <laughs> well, the legislators have been very kind to us the yeah. past couple of years. What is, what is the other school? There's another school. Mississippi uh, School for the Arts. For the Arts. Yes, and then you have the School for the Deaf and Blind. That's those exactly. are the four those, state residential schools. schools. More uh, with Jermaine McConnell coming up next. If you have any questions, you can shoot them to us on this. Have you seen the temperatures? Good morning.
Perez, have you seen the temperatures? Have you no. seen the temperatures? Jermaine, have you seen the temperatures? I felt the temperatures. Well, you're going to feel them even better tonight <laughs> because I believe it's uh, – now, now, here's something else. I don't want to take your time away from you, but here's something else. Has anybody mentioned, have you heard it, Perez, anything about freezing precipitation this week? Not precipitation, just freezing. Uh, well, I let me be the first to tell you, I think there could be. I don't want to hear. Just some stop of our, talking. Some just of stop our, it. <laughs> some of our locations stop it. could have some freezing precipitation. Oh, no. Stop. I'll be the first to tell you. We're you right on the borderline. Well, I will, I will tell you. Speaking of things happening that's beyond our control, uh, how does COVID affect you guys? Well, uh, we started the first quarter, um, you know, all virtual. Mm -hmm. Uh, We do have students, since they live around the state, um, who don't have access uh, to the Internet. Oh, man. I mean, even if they have the resources, they don't, you know, where they live, they can't get it. So we started out with about 10 students on campus um, to make sure we can accommodate them and they're not being left behind. How do you do that? Because you have to have the infrastructure to support them. I would think cafeteria and Everything else that that's correct, and so MGW worked nightmare. with us. Yeah, it's 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 a little bit more difficult, but we still. Where are, are you now, as, as far as today is concerned? Uh, we uh, brought students back for the second quarter, mm-hmm. and so we're alternating juniors and seniors because we're trying to do one student per room, uh, and so that's been difficult as well. We're looking at in the spring semester uh, trying to transition back to full capacity rather than alternating. Have you had some COVID seniors. cases on campus? Uh, we've had a few staff members, but no students. And we've been doing random testing uh, every week while students have been on campus. Well, with the vaccines coming in, hopefully that uh, in your staff too has been. Yeah, so we're yeah. We're, we're excited about um, you know getting back to normal. All right, let, let's talk about what uh, in the limited time we have here, because I think the admission windows is was it August the fifteenth is when you start exactly. We we um, and it closes February the first. So February the first, yes. Okay, so. You have a chance to, to do this all the way to February 1st. That's if correct. You have, if a parent out there has a kid going into next year, mm-hmm. the 10th, uh, I'm sorry, 11th or 12th grade, Yes. here's what they need to do. Yes, they, they need to go to our website, themsms.org, uh, and you can find all the information uh, on the application process if you want to do a tour. Uh, whether that be virtual or come to campus. We mm-hmm. still are accepting uh, people that want to come to campus and just check things out. And um, as far as the financial part, what what, what records do, do they need to bring with them? Um, you know, they don't really need to bring anything uh, with them uh, when they come. I mean, again, it's it's a you know no tuition. Uh, it's free as a public school, so there's no harm in, in looking. But I will say, parents, if you see that your child is not being challenged in a way that they need to be, yeah. you really need to consider. And it's no fault of of the schools that they're in. Some students simply need more of a challenge. Well, if that child is gifted then they are going to get bored that's that's part of the makeup of them and it's 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 not a it's not a, um, a criticism of anybody it's just the, the the situation that it is and i was wondering what do they do in their spare time i do understand that from some of them in past interviews that they work with the city of columbus and that they get involved in the community and they, they uh, there's do. a lot yes. of different things that go on. They ju- they just don't sit in the in the dorm. That's correct. Uh, we have around forty uh, over forty clubs every year. Yeah. Things they can get involved in. We have programming. We have uh, community service opportunities. But we're really trying to help them develop those service minded oriented skills. Uh, because we want them to give back to their communities and the state of Mississippi after they graduate. How long have you been there? I've been there. I came in 2011 uh, as director for academic affairs, yeah. spent two years, and then moved into this position in 2013. Have you had a chance to look at some of the graduates and where they are, and uh, the, do they come back? Uh, we're beginning to see more of them come back, I think, as, as they, they mature. We have around, last survey we did, around 40% that live in the state. The good stat mm-hmm. is for those who live out of state, 63% indicated that they were um, interested in coming back. So. I think, uh, you know, job opportunities, and that's what we're trying to do right now with our current students. Let them see the opportunities that exist in Mississippi to utilize their skills. You look at the difference in lifelong income. Uh, it is amazing. I was looking at some of those figures, but I mean, um, and some of these people get back in teaching, too. Exactly. We have several that get back into teaching, yeah. and boy, we need bright teachers, don't we? Well, and you and I both know this. You're a graduate of Ole Miss, and you grew up, you said, in Meridian? In Meridian, Mississippi. You yes. see how things have changed in the state as far as that uh, educational need level. 
Yes. Uh, it, it is amazing. If you don't have if you don't have a high school education, you're gone. That's correct. That's correct. And high schools have got to be at full service. I mean, full charge to, to teach what is needed. Uh, and, and then that workforce development, we talk about it every single day. Yeah, and, and I think the main thing is, I, I, I don't know if a lot of people know, we have the number one faculty in the nation, according to Niche, for four years in a row, mm. nationally, four years in a row, the number one faculty. So when you're talking about uh, providing students with that challenge and preparing them for the next level, for what's next, mm-hmm. I mean, wow, don't you want your kids taught by the number one faculty in the nation? We have the number one audience of uh, of legislators listening, so might as well go on and put your spill in here. <laughs> what do you need more than ever? Beside um, the beside the, the budget. <laughs> Well, I think that, you know, also we need to, one of our focuses is to connect our students with business and industry throughout the state right now. Uh, And this is a partnership uh, that we have. We play an important part, I think, in helping to develop the future STEM leaders of Mississippi. Our son, uh, C Spire text line, our son graduated from MSMS, wonderful school. He is now a doctor of internal medicine. I serve on the selection committee uh, for several years in the mid '80s. That's just one of the comments that we have coming in. Uh, one of the questions is: Do students have to go home each weekend? No, they do not. Uh, about once a month, because we want them to spend time at home, mm-hmm. and that gives us a chance to clean and do other things as well. But you, to, you got holiday vacation too, and things. We do exactly. That. Yes, but about one one time per month they they go home. But on weekends, we have mm-hmm. several activities for them to engage in. Uh, as far as disciplinary, do you ever kick anybody out? Uh, we allowed them to go back to their home schools, yes, <laughs> some of them. Well, that was well put. <laughs> we, we don't kick them out. We allow them to go back. Nobody's been dragged out of the dorm. Is, and, well, um, I don't know why he's laughing, Perez. Maybe a couple of them have. Apparently. You never know. After a Mississippi State game, probably, <laughs> but we don't want to talk about that one. Uh, I do want to mention this, though, as far as parents – knowing that their kids are taken care of as far as um, COVID or anything else there. I mean, you guys have been doing this for so long. Yes. The medical uh, team is there, uh, everything that they need, the counseling and everything else. That, that's there. correct. And uh, we're located on MEW's campus, so we yeah. utilize their health center. Because um, we realize that these, these, these kids are younger, 10th and I mean, 11th and 12th grade. Yes. And so part of it is, you know, uh, we're expecting them to be responsible as well. But teaching them personal mm-hmm. responsibility is, is so extremely important for us as well. How many campuses, how many kids you say that you have now? You're about 240. Up, and you can take about 250. Uh, well, we can take up to 300, 300 uh, with additional funding, yes. You um, you have any plans of expanding, uh, we, or is that necessary? We would love to. I mean, yeah. the, the more students we can get, we take, turn away students every year. Um, so I think... You know, it would be great if we can accept a so large there is, percentage. There of is a waiting list out there. That's correct. We have a waiting list every year. Is there another school like this? Another uh, there are schools like this in other states. We are a part of the National Consortium of Secondary STEM Schools. In fact, I'm currently serving as the president of that organization. Really? But there are around 250 schools that are uh, that are part of that organization. STEM has become so so important lately in the last few years. But again, to go back real quick. On what we were talking about, Mississippi, our job requirements have changed so much. They have become so so much more technical now yes. than they were 20 or 30 or 40 years ago. And it's, and it's changing rapidly. If you walk into one of the major manufacturers, you see that with all the technology that's going on and all of that technology from the robot all the way into the data input – where you bill, where you where you B U I L D or B U I O or B I L L, yes, both ways. Everything is is digital now. Everything is technical, one That's way correct. or the other. That's correct. It's changing, and I think all the main thing for us is you know we're developing a type of students who can de- you know create jobs for others, right? Yeah. You know this school was developed to tap into the academic potential that we have in the state, and that that's kind of who we are and what we hope to accomplish. Jermaine McConnell, and uh, I got one more question to you, and answer this honestly. And I'm looking at you now, so answer it uh, honestly. Has the new Common Core math been uh, a problem uh, at that school? Because you got the brightest of the brights, and you've seen it, yeah. how they were 10, 15 years ago, and you, you know this. You've talked to a lot of people. Now they're coming in. Are they better prepared or less? 
I can't say uh, that they're better prepared or, or, or less prepared. I think it really depends on the schools, school districts, and teachers in terms of what, what but they're the way taught. they're teaching math now, can you, you do you understand it? Oh, of course. I was a uh, math teacher before, so. But you don't, you understand Common Core math? Well, I, I think you you have to look at uh, teaching math in general, Paul. So, <laughs> so in other words, I have to be a when math. You have, when you have great teachers, you could take they this can math teach anything. Turn it upside down. I got a better chance of completing it. <laughs> it's always good seeing you, sir. Good to see you. Thank uh, you, Jermaine McConnell. If you want more information, go to the website. It is www.themsms.org. The MS themsms.org. Surprised you didn't do msmsms.org. <laughs> All right, back with.